Welcome to your next video on how to convert never-ending decimals into fractions. So sometimes you'll see this little bar above decimal numbers that means that really it's this number and it's just repeated forever infinitely number of places. Now um, this is called a repetend bar which just means that it repeats forever ever and ever. So the first thing I'm going to do in this video is uh, blow your mind if you haven't seen this before. Um, pretty much everybody knows, if you know math, that 0.3 repeating is really one-third, right? So, you know, how could we, the whole focus of this video anyway, is to take something like 0.3 repeating and how would I convert it to one-third? You know, what if I had some crazy never-ending decimal that I didn't know what it was fractionally? That's what we're going to focus on. Um, so everybody usually knows that 0.3 repeating is a third and 0.6 repeating is two-thirds. So what would happen if we followed that pattern and we talked about 0.9 repeating? What would 0.9 repeating end up being fractionally? So if 0.3 repeating is a third and 0.6 repeating is two thirds, then 0.9 repeating would technically end up being three thirds, right? Which is one. So the decimal 0.9999999 forever and ever and ever is really the same thing as the number one. Did you guys hear that? That was your mind being blown. Anyway, let's talk about how to convert these. So 0.5 repeating, what's that as a fraction? Uh, exactly, you don't know what it is. So let's talk about how we could mathematically show and figure out what is this never-ending decimal. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We don't know what this fraction is, so I'm going to call it x. Okay, I'm going to call x equal to 0.5 repeating forever and ever and ever. Now, this thing only repeats one digit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation, x equals 0.5 repeating, by 10. Because multiplying something by 10 is just going to move my decimal place over and my 0.5 repeating just one time to the right. So that would be 5.5. And then again, I would have repeats, right? So let me stack these up a different way. Let me write this underneath this now. And I'll put a zero in front of there. So 10 times my fraction equals really 5.5 repeating forever. And my unknown fraction is really equal to 0.5 repeating forever. Uh, think about back to uh, substitution and elimination where we can really subtract these two equations. Okay, so 10x minus x, well, that's 9x. And now watch what happens when I take 5.5 repeating minus 0.5 repeating. Well, all of these repeating fives, when I subtract, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. They're all going to go away. And what's left over? 5 minus 0, which is 5. Now, solve for x. Divide the 9 over. So 5 ninths, if I were to punch 5 divided by 9 in my calculator, guess what I get? 0.5 repeating. Nice. Okay, so that's what I do if I have one repeating decimal, and it's the only repeating decimal. Uh, what you'll notice pattern-wise is, um, for instance, 0.4 repeating. What's it? Well, it's that number with a 9 underneath. Try it out. Try it on your calculator. 4 ninths is 0.4 repeating. Now, 0.3 repeating, we said was 1 third earlier, but really it starts out as 3 ninths and then simplifies to 1 third. Uh, 0.2 repeating is 2 ninths. Uh, 0.1 repeating is 1 ninth. 0.7 repeating is 7 ninths, which is why when we get back to 0.9 repeating, it's 9 ninths, which is 1. So, uh, single digits are a piece of cake. You always just remember it's that number that's being repeated with a 9 underneath it, and then simplify it if you can. But this is how you figure it out mathematically. Now, what if we had two numbers repeat? What if I had 0 0.72727272727272? 72. It can't just be 72 with a 9 over it because 72 divided by 9 would be 8, and that's nowhere near that. So what we do is something similar to what we did before. Now we have two digits that repeat. So instead of just multiplying by 10, well, if we multiplied by 100, so again, let's call this x, and then let's move this down here just a smidge. So I'm going to do my math kind of going the opposite way. If I were to multiply both sides by 100, I have 100x, and then multiplying by 100 is going to move my decimal point really over to, to the right. 
So then that's going to end up being 72.72727272727272. And when I subtract, I'll get 99x equals, you know, the repeating parts are going to drop out, and I'm left with 72. Then divide the 99 over. Now, 72 out of 99, does that simplify? It does. Uh, we could divide both of these by 9. And so simplified, it's really 8 elevenths. So even if I type into my calculator, 8 divided by 11, hey, look, it's 0.72727272, repeating forever. So what's the shortcut with two digits? Well, let's say I've got 0.51 repeating. Well, all that is is the 51 with 99 underneath it. And then simplify it if you can. In this case, it can simplify because I can divide both of those by 3, and it'd be 17 over 33 would be the fully simplified fraction. So that's the trick with 2s. Now, what if I have three numbers repeating, like 0.693? Well, it's going to be 693, and now I'm going to have three nines underneath. So you could come up with, I mean, this works for any number of repeating digits. You know, let's say I had this repeating, you know, 0.10425, 10.425. What would it be as a fraction? 10.425 with as many nines underneath it. I have five numbers up here. I need five nines down there and then see if that thing can fully simplify. So you might go, all right, sweet, these, these seem pretty easy now. But now what if I have some numbers repeat, but some don't repeat? You know, what if I have 0.58333333 and the 58 doesn't repeat? You know, can we still do this the same way we did before? Is this just um, 583 over 999? And no, it's not the same. At least I don't think so. No, it's not. So here's what we need to look at. Um, you can kind of just play around with this. So this is what I kind of figured out how to how to get this here. I said, all right, what if I called this x? And let's see. Um, the repeating starts really right here, right? So if I really wanted to move my decimal point over 2 to the right, I would need to multiply by 100. So that's what I started with. I said, all right, let's multiply both sides by 100 then that would be 58.3 repeating. And so now if I want to subtract, I'm going to have my usual 99x, but watch what happens here. This really doesn't, well, I guess I need to line these up a little better, right? Let me throw in a few threes. And then this was 0 0.583. So this repeats, that repeats. So these repeats cancel out, but now I've got, I'm going to end up with a decimal number here, right? So let's see, that's 12, and then that's 7. Uh, so we get 57.75. So 99x equals 57.75. Well, when I divide by 99, I you can't really have decimals with fractions. I mean, you can, but if I wanted this to purely be a fraction with whole number, numerator, denominator values, this is where I'm just going to have to do one little step. Right? If I need to move this over 2 to the right so I don't have a decimal anymore, well, that means I need to move 2 to the right in my denominator. So really, I'm just multiplying the numerator and denominator by 100, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1, right? Because if I multiply the top by 100 and the denominator by 100, I'm really multiplying 100 over 100, which is 1, so I'm not changing anything truly. So 5775 out of 9900 is my fraction. Now, if I throw that my calculator and simplify it, which it definitely can, since we have uh, 0 and 5 factors here, it comes out to be 7 twelfths. Um, so is there a particular way that you could quickly grab these numbers and figure out that it's 57.75? Maybe there is. I didn't really, you know, dive too deeply into this to see well, what I would need to do to this to get to this. I'm sure there is a pattern, so I'm going to kind of leave it to you guys to see if you can take any decimal that has non-repeating and repeating digits and see if you can figure out the particular pattern to figure out its fraction. So that is all for this video.